To mourn a loss is to be human. Knowing this, what does it mean to mourn a shortfall of potential? A while ago, I decided to rank every VST I had ever used, building a giant tier list. That's a separate video linked in the top right and in the description if you'd like to check it out. It's long and rambly. The features here are sort of highlights. Tragic highlights. Brilliant ideas that crumbled in the execution stage. Some fallen VSTs that I'd like to salute real quick. To start with, recall the Atari 2600. It was made in ancient times, during an oil crisis. It could make sounds, but each pitch was generated by using an integer divisor of a set clock speed, meaning all the music out of the chip was out of tune, more often than not. But it excelled at, and became iconic for, its ARP runs. It'd be fun, and relatively easy, to draw inspiration from this with a basic synth setup. LFOs being routed to oscillator pitch? This is common. All you need to do is quantize the LFO a little bit. Imagine being able to do this algorithmically. In comes Hughes 2600, which does exactly that. It makes some beautiful sounds, though its functionality is hidden behind a dreadfully obfuscatory interface. I can deal with those, but the author did not take phase into account at all. When you send a note on command, you get a random point on the LFO. This makes it tragically hard to work with. This could have been good. A quick way for a synth to appeal to me is to have a fun and novel method of generating sound. Toonfish looks, at first glance, like it's built from additive synthesis. But no, that's just a visualization aid. The control is actually in these six dials here. I don't actually fully understand how they work, but I don't, I don't need to. The changes to the sound make sense. Bandwidth, depth, harmonics. These change the fall off of the curve here. Scale is kind of like a sync osc, but smoother. Modulation is kind of like adding noise, but also smoother. I'm not sure how I'd replicate any of this myself, and that's why I love it. There's not too much additional traditional routing on the synth, but it doesn't need it. Just add some envelopes to these six dials. Also, I really love how extreme the unison to tune is. Listen to this. Crazy. But this video is about tragic plugins. So what's the catch? Well, you can't save. All these neat sound manipulation options, but no matter what you set them to, once you exit and reopen your project, you'll be staring down the barrel of default SuperSol. In my huge tier list video, this particular VST was well on track to becoming a B tier. Not mind blowing, but still delightful. A synth that I'd love to keep around, but it's useless to me if I can't save my patches. Ors holds a shuffled version of all these problems. It can save. I can still load all the patches I made years and years ago, but I have a lot of little complaints. I don't think the author designed this with the intent to modify patches while playing a sequence. All the dials start at negative 10,000 and sound best when set to positive 0.8. This range is absurd, but I can deal with that, I guess. It has some unique oscillator features. The generators seem to be based on harmonics, but not strictly. The noise generator is one of the most unique I've heard. I think I'd use this synth for the noise generation alone, but would use. That's conditional tense in the tragic plugin video. 
what's the catch this time? Well, the interface doesn't work anymore. The interface of a modular synth. I can only see it when I load the plugin in an ancient version of Modplug Tracker. I suspect this has something to do with 32-bit versus 64-bit architecture, but I don't actually know. How terrible, though. I mean, I would still call this undercooked, but it had a potential to be a shining star. Now it's just a snapshot of an artifact, fell by the shifting ground that held its foundation. In May of 2002, divine inspiration struck. Digital signal processing and 3D artistry intersected and unleashed onto the world, quite possibly the single most charming virtual instrument that humanity would ever witness, Delay Llama. These dated graphics and this blindingly distinct <coughs> sound fit together perfectly, rivaling the connection between the 303 and Acid. Citation needed, but... Okay, so I can't prove it, but I think this spawned a trend of VSTs that focused on looks. Some of these actually came pretty close to matching the charm of Delay Llama. For example, Meow Synth. Four seasons did not come close. All of the notes play out an octave higher than you'd expect. The audio output clips quickly. One of the four effects here is uselessly dedicated to SNES-style stereo inversion. Turning on Glide will break the spread, though in fairness these are labeled as Summer and Winter. Diametric. I'm not sure why Summer is the one to break though. And yeah, this is a rough edge to plug in even for 2004, or maybe it was 2005, I'm actually not sure. But uh, I think this was just a wrapper for the oscillator, which was a free space to draw your, a waveform of your own. So what, you say, recalling plenty of synths and an entire game's console that lets you do this? Well, what you're thinking of is the secondary draw mode. The primary draw mode is squishy. Watch and listen. It smooths out the waveform in a really interesting way, providing smoothly modulating sound. It, it, it's neat. It's one of a kind. And it can't be used in production. You can't automate this. You can't store anything beyond the current shape of the waveform. So, if you want to play with the sound, you have to do it live. There's a sort of beauty to that, I suppose. A tragic life that can only be lived live. But mostly, I just wish I could record my changes non-destructively. And that was only four entries, yet the video title mentions five. Where's the fifth? Well, there's too many to pick from. I'm certain that you can name a synth that was so close to being perfectly executed, but embarrassingly falls on its face. Adonis if it had a cleaner layout, Ringdown if it had more destructive parameters, Bertil if it had a routing diagram. Actually, I'm certain you could imagine things like that outside of synths. Perfection is an ideal, and ideals simply don't fit into the real world. Creating a VST is hard. I've tried. I strived for something that's perfect, with all of its flaws reduced to shavings on the cutting room floor. But I never reached it, and never will. Nobody will. So I think you should celebrate even the sense with flawed execution. Spend some time with it. You may even be surprised. Maybe fall in love. You never know.